Well, we know he was about twice in Ireland, uh, around 1200 and then around about 1210 or something, 1210 or something. Uh, there were two years in Ireland. But remember that actually the work was going on all the time. And the only way, because Marshall was fighting in France, he was all over the place, I mean, a major, major figure, and central to the whole Magna Carta business. He saved Magna Carta. Wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't have it without Marshall. That's another story. But um, the point is that um, Marshall was just too busy to be in his own, so he handed it over to his trusted lieutenants. And his trusted lieutenants were the men from his own household who be planted in, essentially, in Kilkenny. They gave him the loyal support. John conspired against Marshall and started a baronial revolt led by um, Fitzhenry, uh, who was technically one of Marshall's tenants. Uh, and they, they attacked uh, Kilkenny Castle in 1208. Uh, but it was held. It was held by Fitzrobert and the faithful. And I think his was in it. Uh, it's all there in the Histoire de, de Guillaume de la Marais Chambre. And um, so uh, it, it looks as very much as if Kilkenny Castle was well advanced at the time, incidentally, when it comes to castle building, in order to hold out against a veteran like Mayor Fitzhenry and some of the uh, Leinster barons who were no parvenus when it came to, to warfare. So um, Marshall then, I, I've, I've run out of time. Now. Of the minutes. All right. Marshall then, that was not the end of it. Marshall had to build these castles. Uh, and uh, they're very obvious. He would have got to look out the window to see that he meant business. Uh, he had as much, not against the Irish, the threat was from his own baronage. So remember that when you build a big castle. It's your, keep your friends close <laughs> under the shadow of the ramparts if possible. Uh, and that's very important. Marshall also saw to economic development. It was very important. Waterford had been lost. Wexford was too far out of the centre. And he built New Ross as a major foundation. We know that because he set aside 506 burgages. A really major town. Carlo and Ferns only had 160. So you can see the scale of what Marshall had in mind. And of course, um, New Ross was to, to channel the trade of the barrow and the north. And, and, and in other words, draw the revenue, the trade of the lordship into Marshall's, uh, into Marshall's exchequer. And the last thing I would say about Marshall is, of course, that he also almost certainly organized the counties. Now, that's terribly important, because that's the judicial, it's the refinements of government. It's no longer a land of terror, as it was in 1177, of lands. You know, there's, uh, it's now a land of four medieval counties, each with their uh, county courts, with their sheriff who resides over the court, and with all the sheriff's officers, his sergeants, and you have coroners, and all these people operating in the subdivisions of the shire. <coughs> and of course, uh, Marshall had presiding over all that the court of the liberty of um, Leinster, which exercised royal jurisdictions. It excluded royal writs. The king's writ did not run in Leinster. They only marshals. And offenses in Leinster were offenses against marshals, peace, not the kings. And if you're going to be hanged for robbing, you had the joy of knowing you were going to be hanged on your lord's gallows, not on the king's gallows. I, I think that that's, I'm sorry, this has been rather all over the place. But uh, to try and give you an impression, I think, of what building lordship is about and how, um, in a way, Marshall was the master. Uh, he rescued Leinster from almost certain disintegration, I would say. So we owe not only Magna Carta to him, but Leinster as well.